Welcome everyone to my comprehensive double melee guide to Armored Core 6. My videos to date have touched on many of these points, but I want to make a one-stop shop video for anyone looking to play the double melee style, as well as drawing some attention to some of the nuances of this build style because it didn't get the credit it was deserved since launch, and I still firmly believe that uh, double melee is even S rank viable. Uh, if you're a veteran of melee, I would still encourage you to watch this video entirely as I've sprinkled in some text that I haven't published yet in my other videos. Uh, once I put it all down in writing, I was shocked at just how complex the melee interactions are and how many little texts I never really took the time to highlight uh, slipped by. But uh, first, I'll cover all the various texts and interactions that are used. Uh, we'll next cover combo building then reading your opponent's build to decide on your best approach method, as well as purging decisions that may be necessary. After that, it'll be an in-depth guide on handling some of the more common difficult matchups. So with that, let's dive in with the long list of texts. So starting from the beginning, melee canceling lunges. This is done by canceling the melee lunge of a, of a given weapon with either a quick boost, referred to, Q, uh, referred to as QB going forward, or you can cancel with an assault boost, referred to as KB going forward. So using QB cancelling is slightly more EN intensive per meter of distance covered, but it works out to be more efficient overall when your opponent is kiting backwards due to cutting down the time spent chasing, so less distance that you'll be doing it over in total. The AB cancelling tends to be used once you've lunged into a threatening range and want to transition into psychologically pressuring uh, your opponent with the right hand weapon and in order to force a prediction melee lunge opportunity. I'll discuss what that is later. Or if your opponent begins to move vertically outside the lunge angle or versus tanks where we need any or every bit of EN we can squeeze out to finish combos with some left over to escape. Um, Note that if opponents get sharp enough angles above or below you, your lunge will automatically slash, putting you on cooldown, and more importantly, taking away your primary movement method. It's important not to allow this to happen freely, and break any habit of cancelling the lunge with QB and then activating AB in, uh, uh, right after that, uh, as this is wasteful on EN as well. So like when the moment comes where you need to start ABing, you need to cancel that lunge with an AB instead of QB. Uh, it's faster and more efficient. The light melee lunge is used when trying to close the gap in general, while the heavy lunge can be more valuable when your opponent either has a slow QB reload, usually greater than half a second, and or when you need the burst impact of the charge attack, or you need the interrupt in your attack and your initiation, which I'll discuss later too, because there are some build types where you want to be able to interrupt them and prevent them from getting any more. Note that the charge pulse plate has losing priority and is countered by opponent's kicks, however. So uh, reverse joints are notorious for this as well. It's very difficult to get a melee lunge in as your opener when they expect it and are going to kick in order to cancel uh, the attack. The light lunge though can oftentimes get one slash in but you'll still take the kick. In short, heavy lunge is used when you can set up the opening either by kicking yourself, causing their kick to whiff, uh, or sorry, their kick to whiff, or by the nature of their build not wanting to attempt a uh, kick. Or by prediction punishing a QB from uh, your right hand weapon and missiles creating psychological pressure and you anticipate when they're about to QP. If they activate it and then you uh, activate your melee lunge at the same time, you'll actually chase them even backwards uh, and they won't have their QB off of reload uh, and then you'll guarantee a charging melee lunge. It's a really powerful tech and it requires psychological understanding of your opponent, but uh, it is one of the ways that you can guarantee a charged, uh, a charged lunge. Next, let's talk about kicks. Uh, these are an essential, complex, and very nuanced skill to kind of master, particularly the maximum range to initiate the kicks so that you always win or draw the kick fight. Um, and also being aware of uh, kick priority. So if somebody has a reverse joint, you're going to lose the kick fight 90% of the time if you just try to trade into it. And same with Tetris. Um, for some of those builds, it's often best to approach with a height disparity to make it so that their kicks are uh, less likely to be able to track accurately. And you can drop down on you once you're, um, or as you get closer to your kick's uh, effective range. You can also counter opponents who use this maximum range kick by um, like say you're against another biped user and you're both aware that uh, maximum range kicks are optimal um, if you want to win the fight, you can then do a, a, a counter to that by cubing backwards and then going into a charged pulse plate. So you'll both uh, attempt to do a 
max range kick, but instead you change your mind and you QB backwards, causing them to whiff while you then go into a charged pulse blade or a light pulse blade, depending. It really just depends on their build. But this loses to those who then try to do a closer range kick and don't know this, the more complex strategy of kick fights. So uh, it basically creates a 50-50 guessing game. If they make a read on you attempting this uh, backwards QB, uh, then they're going to just do a, a delayed kick. If uh, they just go for the uh, uh, standard kick, it'll also connect. So uh, yeah, you, you just need to be aware that this is a mind game. You have to make a read. And so it should also be done sparingly. If you become predictable, they're going to know what to do on the follow-up interactions. Uh, so don't be predictable. Kicks also function as your universally available interrupt attack. So the interrupts are anything that sort of causes that mini stun effect. And this has the unique traits of decharging many different laser type weapons. Not, not others though, like the Karasal or the lot. Uh, it disables orbit type weapons like the Huxley. Uh, it interrupts many opponents' combos or initiation styles or prevents them from starting their combos. Uh, it'll also interrupt opponent movement, which is notable for things like wheelchairs, as well as hold them in place for your missile as well, which comes up with tanks. So yeah, this comes up a lot with tanks, wheelchairs, quad laser, vertical kite builds on heavy bipeds, and um, you can also use kicks as a final bit of impact when your weapons are on cooldown. Say your Zimmerman sort of whiffed slightly, you didn't quite get all you needed, the kick can often uh, finish the stagger. But do note that kicks have a long window of vulnerability if you whiff or if it doesn't do the trick, and so it tends to be less useful against lightweight impact over time opponents builds such as like double edge and Mantos. Uh, if used, well, they still have EN anyway, and so it's largely not worth it to go for too many kicks against them. Some charged melee attacks also have parry frames similar to shields. That's another unique trait in the game. So most notable here is going to be the charged uh, slicer attack, which grants immunity to interrupt, and including uh, including versus things like the charged worker, by the way, which is a little bit surprising. And charged workers are a very common thorn for melee builds, um, as they're really good at shutting down approaches. Uh, the charge slicer will also reduce impact and damage taken slightly and are of particular value against reverse joint kicks uh, on initiation while doing decent burst impact on slash and also having an interrupt of its own at the end. Uh, this animation has a window of vulnerability at the beginning of the charge up as well as a very tight window of vulnerability at the end of the defensive spin but just before the mini stunning slash that can occasionally get a lucky interrupt in against you but that's usually more due to bad luck. But the point here being that the charge laser slicer usually has to be done on prediction because of that opening window of vulnerability being a little bit long. Um, if you whiff the charge slicer, it also has a, a bit of a long recovery animation, so QB canceling that is going to be essential. But just keep in mind that, uh, again, with the whole thing with being predictable, you can't just open up with the same strategy every time. There is not a simple, this strategy works uh, every time against this build with double melee. It's very much a psychological game. I mentioned burst impact already, so I'll also point out the difference between burst and accumulative impact. So melee builds strive to make an opening amount of impact that exceeds their opponent's stability outright. So impact decays after about a half second if no more consecutive hits occur, and your impact value will decay down to whatever your weapon's accumulative impact total was. You'll note that my build in question here has 2517 burst impact without including any kicks. So that's 1,200 from the Charge Pulse Blade, 717 from the Jav Beta, and 600 from the Zimmerman, which also includes a mini stun interrupt. So the Pulse Blade lands, I land the shotgun, and the, Zimmer and the missile hopefully arrives somewhere in that window while the Pulse Blade is holding them still. Uh, this is enough to stagger all but the most heaviest like tanks or tetras, though they can be staggered with an opening kick added in at the beginning, so even like there is no build that can survive not getting insta-staggered by this melee build. And that's deliberate. Uh, you should really prioritize this as melee builds a lot of times have to really earn their first initiation, and if you don't make the most of it, like if you have to do two chase downs to stagger a build, it's going to be a very punishing uh, task that you have to overcome. On this topic though, consider when your first attempt was unsuccessful. Uh, to stagger them. Often the accumulative impact that you've built up from that attempt means that you need less attacks to get the job done on the follow-up. For example, you may not need to land the pulse blade lunge and can just get a Zimmerman to do the job, allowing a pulse blade punish first instead of the slicer. Uh, so it'd be a pulse blade punish, you'd counter assault armor into the follow-up slicer instead, which is more powerful than the standard combo, which is pulse blade to Zimmerman to stagger, start the slicer, um, which is going to get interrupted. Uh, 
In other words, your attack order sometimes changes based on the opponent's stagger buildup. Uh, a good example would be like heavy bipeds, who normally will get staggered with the pulse plate slicer, which then gets interrupted with the expansion before it's done most of its damage. And then I only get a half of the slicer plus a pulse plate punish um, in there. However, if I can stagger them with the Zimmerman after a failed initiation attempt, but enough accumulative impact, I can get the pulse plate single slash in before the pulse armor opens, then counter with the assault armor, then get a much greater full slicer punish confirmed with the restagger. With the pulse plate again, by the way, ready to go follow, um, following the slicer's uh, animation. If the opponent is slow on the pulse armor, you can potentially even get both slashes in on the first punish, which will essentially kill them in one combo. Um, uh, outright. Um, what I'm trying to highlight here is that opportunities for order mix-ups exist, in other words, and that this is something you need to evaluate on the fly. Other times it may overcomplicate and maybe not necessary, like if they don't have that much AP and you need to consider this, but this comes up a lot with tanks and heavy tetras, um, and just like the heaviest bipeds, looking for opportunities to make it so that the slicer becomes guaranteed to like, full punish rather than the pulse so uh, let's talk about missiles for a bit. You'll want to master timing your missile to arrive when it's desired. This changes based on your opponent who may be a rush down, like closing the gap to you versus kites who are trying to create space and buy more time. And you need different launch distances to start um, in order to time them well. But one of the easiest missiles to keep uh, consistent, which also happens to be, in my opinion, the best missile for melee, is the jab beta, which also have um, the reason this missile is so good for CQB is just because it, it does a lot of the jobs well enough. There are others that specialize a bit more, but this one just handles a lot of things uh, well enough. But anyways, an ideal order to have your attacks land is to fire the missile uh, in advance at the correct range to make it timed for your initiation type. You're going to do the pulse blade charger light attacks, have the missile arrive right after that, then you fire your Zimmerman. It's not essential to be perfect on this, but uh, having it land in that order should be the optimal goal. It provides the least amount of windows to evade everything, and uh, also prevents the cumulative decay the best. Um, and one other note too, the Javelin Beta stagger extends like these by the way. This comes up more with lightweights that tend to create space against you. Uh, and you stagger them and then the Javelin Missile comes in and stagger extends while you finish closing the gap. Another tech, melee lunge slinging, and I didn't mention this one yet, don't believe, but uh, you can melee lunge sling either into a QB or your assault armor. So you can cancel a melee lunge into forward QB in order to sling yourself fa uh, faster and further towards instead of just QBing. This is a specific tech that is largely used against reverse joint kick openers, as they're, they're very unreliable to just dodge only, like to just try to do a QB dodge, uh, whether that be due to latency or the extended kickbox of the kick, um, and the lack of their max body being available for your kick to register. So another sling tech is to cancel the lunge with AA in order to shut down PA attempts that uh, manage to get some space after you've staggered them. This only works if the pulse blade is off cooldown, obviously. So if you're between 100 to 200 meters away when they start the pulse armor, you'll light melee lunge sling and then cancel it by activating assault armor. If you're closer, use AB and then cancel it with assault armor. Otherwise, you'll sling right past them if you try to use the uh, close. If you try to use the lunge version at, at close range. So creating combos. It's best to build your melee combos to have more than one option. At the very least, I think having one defensive initiation style against rushdowns like kicks, interrupts or burst impact and damage, and one offensive chase down combo. Note that input order during combos matter, particularly when to weapon swap your left side, as well as when you need to QB cancel animations for time saving. For example, landing the charged pulse plate into Zimmerman follow up requires a QB cancel after the slash to shorten that recovery animation to get the Zimmerman out sooner. Uh, the direction of this QB also matters in that you need to keep yourself close but not point blank when versing the lightweights or the Zimmerman will clip through them and not register a hit. Many high level opponents will take advantage of this uh, hitbox tech and purposely mash against you so that the Zimmermans can never land. Uh, especially like if you just used your pulse play, they know that you can't do it again, they'll just mash against you while they keep shooting. Going the wrong way when, the, when you do these QBs will result um, it will result in a reduced hit and ensuing impact. Um, so charge pulse play to Zimmerman is an 1800 burst impact if fully registered by the way, which is enough to stagger anything below a reasonably heavy medium weight biped. 
The geometry of this skill you kind of have to pick up with practice, but it's suffice to say that moving with them in parallel as they QB panic uh, after the lunge hits is usually a good option. Try to read your opponent's habits of directions of dodging, even if it's just, okay, do they tend to go left or to the right, and then just guess on the angle. Um, like, do they tend to go away from you, or do they tend to try to QB past you? Um, away is usually a less skillful option, but uh, higher level people will try to go through you to make your camera spin. But you may uh, be able to psychologically pressure them from so many follow-up pulse blade prediction lenses on them that they may start going backwards. Interrupts other than the kick for at least one opening um, in your combo are a huge asset and will be a noticeable weakness, if not present, that needs to be counterbalanced with something else. So what I mean by this is that one of your melee weapons having an interrupt is like it's such a huge asset and having zero of that do can really hamper you. Uh, this, uh, you can see my Coral Oscillator and Shield build for an example of a melee build that doesn't have a mini stun opener. Um, unless I'm doing the charge for a loss later, but that's more of a niche. This build offsets the lack of mini stun opener with a shield, so it can shut down opponents who try to aggressively use interrupts like kicks or murder um, while I'm trying to pour a loss late. So, um, yeah, you need something, you need to answer the question of what to do when people rush and try to kick you nonstop. You, you can't just melee lunge through those, because they lose priority in those situations. Something else to be aware of in your combos, ask what your follow-up is going to be once your first your first punish gets cancelled by pulse armor, assault armor counter. So if you have nothing left in the gas tank to do after that, it might have actually been better just to run pulse armor yourself. But if you can build in a third punish, you'll need to weapon swap the left side. Um, stagger extend with the Zimmerman, then start the third punish is the most common example. If you do stagger extend before the swap, many weapons will not have time to start their punish, just so you know. So, um, yeah, like, so if, yeah, if you do the stagger extend before the swap, what I mean by that is uh, it's actually better to start swapping the left side and then shoot the Zimmerman rather than vice versa because that buys you a little bit more time to do the melee thrust uh, on the left side after you hit them with the Zimmerman. Punches can also be really useful here though. They have a very long time of draw where like the punches are just going on for a long time. Uh, you can actually initiate with the pulse blade, swap to punching, um, as your uh, uh, as your stagger extending, and then the pulse blade will be off cooldown by the time you're done. So um, something else to also consider though with punches, you can often just do one punch, weapon swap the left side if it's your right hand, second punch into melee punch, uh, or sorry into melee punish is sort of like the optimal to avoid uh, maxing out the stagger extension uh, that you can have prematurely, and also separate the weapon swap and the melee punish into two different stagger extensions so that you don't fail the punish lunge. What I mean by that is um, when you punch and then trying to weapon swap and then start the melee punish all in one window it might be a little too greedy. You may have to punch, weapon swap, uh, punch one more time with the right hand and then start the melee lunge just to make sure it's nice and secured. So let's talk about missiles now. Uh, what kind of missiles are optimal? The main, sh there are the main considerations for melee missile choices are What's its burst impact uh, contribution? So like how much burst impact can I reliably count on from this missile? Missiles that are split into sub-missiles, like lots of little ones, tend to not reliably land all of them. Um, so that value becomes a little bit flexible about what you're going to get from it, for example. Uh, and then also the total kind of matters. So like something like the suit missile has like a thousand impact, but uh, the smaller ones have lesser values. Also. Can I use this when the fight gets into CQC range, or does it no longer work once the fight gets point blank? Because you will be spending a lot of time at that range. Um, you know, like the some missiles just are not going to do anything once you're point blank. The straight shooting ones might work, but maybe the dual missiles uh, not so much because they tend to just go too high and they'll get behind you by the time the missiles uh, start to come down. Uh, another factor: Can I use this against kiters to prevent impact decay via spacing? Consider reload time here, like how close you need to be for the missiles to close the gap as well. So uh, faster reload missiles, while maybe lower values in terms of impact, are better at reliably building that impact up over time and making sure that they don't ever get a chance to uh, create space or, or allow their impact to decay back down uh, to zero. Can the missile hit behind shields? The Javelin Beta is the most universally flexible missile, but if you're um, matching up against you know, known builds in a custom lobby or something, you can often choose more optimal ones on a case-by-case -case basis. 
For example, Rensetsu Kaidus are better dealt with using medium dual missiles due to the range, the quick amount of time before they pick up speed and close the gap, the fast reload, uh, and then they're effective when the opponent tries to go vertical as well. Uh, and they just keep them for forcibly stopping from backpedaling even at long range. Uh, while something like the double AZTs have the highest burst impact and that reliably hits in its entirety. It's only two different missiles and it can be timed really easily. They also track vertical heavy bipeds very well uh, due to their slow move speed and they guarantee to stagger on tanks much more reliably when you mess up other parts of the combos that you're going to need to stagger them. Okay, so next topic is match start, evaluating the opponent's build and purging decisions. So this is a crucial moment when you see your two different mechs at the starting screen of the fight where it shows you it shows both of you each of your mechs. Um, this is a moment where you're going to look at your opponent's weapons and determine their likely combo and uh, like how they're likely going to try to initiate on you, uh, any weaknesses that you can exploit in that, especially if you need to open up with an interrupt or not, that's going to be a big decision as well as critical attacks that you need to either slip, uh, and then if you do manage to slip them, then you can take full aggression and knowing that that's what you gotta do. A good example would be when people have double ear shots. If you can bait out or slip the, the ear shots, that usually means they're sitting duck for 12 seconds. Uh, so just getting full aggression on that moment is, and then counting down the 12 seconds so that you know when you have to start backing up and try, get ready to bait it again. Uh, next, note their stability based on their head, core, and legs. Um, how many different combos from your options can insta-stagger them? Do you need your missiles, for example? Do you need your slice, or is the uh, pulse, triple punch, pulse, and instant kill anyways, based on their AP? Uh, you know, you don't always need all of your pieces of gear. Purging the gear that you won't need uh, and isn't really contributing much grants you more EN recharge as well as more speed and evasion distance when you QD due to your weight dropping. So purge what's unnecessary, and think of your build as having multiple forms. Next, note your opponent's QB recharge time based on their booster. So longer boosters, or sorry, stronger boosters for heavier builds usually guarantee a charge to pulse blade if you do it on prediction of a QB. Uh, quicker boosters like the Alula or the Gills usually indicate that charged pulse blade is simply not viable, and you're instead looking to land single light slashes. Boosters like the NGI and the Gridwalker indicate a vertical kite, which is difficult to set up melee lunges for. These builds are often about staggering with light slashes sparingly, and mostly with the missile fire and Zimmerman uh, and kicks. Uh, typically I'll do the Zimmerman, the missile lands while I kick them, and then just do a single pulse blade or double slash if, uh, if I get the opportunity, as the, charge as the charge pulse blade is just simply too easy to kite by free falling and resting on them, so I can't really shoot that. It's a good thing we have the Kakaku's EN efficiency while well, ABing, it allows us to stay in this sort of situation for a long time, peppering them and trying to build up the impact against some of those more tanky heavy bipeds. Okay, finally let's talk about match-up specific strategies against certain types of builds and some of the more common ones, uh, some that are maybe giving you a lot of trouble because they're just disadvantageous matchups. Uh, so if we're assuming optimal play from both sides, those builds will be able to win. Uh, there's so many different builds to cover, too many for me to like make an individual strategy for everything. So what I'll do is I'll just outline some of the more common general strategies and how to handle them. And then you'll have to ad adapt on the fly based around changes to those builds. So like whether or not they incorporate a shield that normally wouldn't be on that build and whatnot. So uh, that will take some creativity, but uh, let's just cover the most familiar ones. So I'll start with the lightweights. Um, the most common you'll probably see is the lightweight kites, aka things like Alula, Nock, and dou double Ransetsu or Ransetsu Harris, uh, and then usually two missiles that have pretty fast reload um, in order to uh, just keep the impact built up and, and uh, prevent it from decaying. So right off the bat, you're going to purge the slicer and keep the javelin beta, I've decided, uh, is more optimal than purging both. Um, these builds attempt to draw the chase down time as long as possible by pairing either the Alula, the BST booster, or the NGI, something with fast boot speed that gives us really good backpedal. And then pair it usually with the knock legs to allow QB plus backwards jump distance, keeping you in that mid-range distance where they gradually build up damage and impact and avoid spending EN of their own until you close the gap at which point they usually go airborne by jumping and try to finish staggering you at that point um, while you either recharge your EN while you stay on the ground or if you attempt to chase up with too little to get the job done. Once they, uh, once they get the stagger earned, that'll get them a reset in distance as well as recharge their own EN if they had to spend any. 
These builds are incredibly fragile though and have very low stability. Uh, the way to counter these builds is to light melee lunge to close the gap uh, with an essential emphasis on maximizing the distance lunged for use. So you can't be spamming QB too early. Uh, QB cancel initially but switch to AB cancel once you get close enough to be around the 150 meter range or so. At that point you fire the javelin beta um, and the goal here is to force them to either take the missile or to, uh, to avoid you closing the gap further or uh, to go up or try to go through you and um, sorry uh, or go up and take the missile to get height if they instead decide to ab or qb through you though you can score a solid zimmerman hit uh and a single light slash follow-up um sometimes depending on their build like if they dodge twice you may not be able to get the slash but the point is to get one guaranteed hit once you've landed at least one hit of something they're primed for stagger so landing uh another missile or a slash or zimmerman means that any follow-up two strike hit is a stagger uh, the quickest animation in your tool belt is the close range Zimmerman into Light Slash. It's faster than the Light Slash into Zimmerman due to the animation recovery after one Light Slash. And that'll give you a quick burst of 1300 impact, uh, which is uh, also puts you in the position to use your Assault Armor Punish, by the way, if you, if you stagger with the Slash rather than the Zimmerman. But keep in mind, high level players will dodge on Zimmerman animations coming up, uh, like as the gun lifts up, and so weaving in cancels before committing, and you may need to vary your mix up to trip them up, such as uh, light slash into Zimmerman occasionally. Um, if the opponent instead starts to go up into the air uh, after you start to close the gap, you'll want to passively evade just with your movement in like circles, but while, pre while pressuring, sorry, not in circles, but like sort of curving, but trying to body them into the, uh, keep them into the edge of the map and don't let them get any space that they haven't earned. They will be slightly faster than you, but you need to just uh, keep yourself as close as possible while grounded to get your EN entirely back. Uh, don't try to cut yourself short and try to get over at eager and start chasing before the bar is completely full. Once that's happened though, you're going to start chasing with AB in the air, uh, hitting with the Javelin Beta um, and the Zimmerman if, it, if you get opportunities, uh, trying to set up a prediction melee lunge. They can't QB as effectively in the air without being grounded as they, they don't have the jump distance, but uh, don't get greedy on the stagger if in the air and try to set up punches. Just aim to set up the immediate Assault Armor Punish, that's all you need. Um, and you don't want to give them a chance to pop their Pulse Armor. Um, while you're getting greedy with the punches trying to cancel it. They will drop too fast and you won't get the uh, assault armor counter stagger most of the time. Ideally, um, ideally you want to stagger them with the Zimmerman Light Slash so that you're in position to assault armor, but if it's on cooldown you can substitute a punch lunge to get back into position. Um, so yep, yeah, that's basically how we're going to handle the medium lightweight kites. Let's talk about two different types of builds next, which is dual Vientos, dual Exigens, dual Pistols. Um, you could also include the Haldmans in here, I think, uh, and then usually they'll have some sort of melee punish. Uh, first off, if it's a lightweight, you can purge the slicer uh, as you won't need it, and you can also have that extra punch lunge to get one more burst of impact when you're just a little short, say, due to a poor Zimmerman shot. It gives you one more tool in your tool bolt anyways. Um, these builds will tend to want to stay on the ground, though, just keeping dodging uh, if they're lightweights. If it's a heavy biped version of this build, however, know that you need the slicer, and so you will trade off some EN recharge time. It's not going to be a huge penalty though, just because usually if you run out of EN, this fight's already over. These fights are decided incredibly fast, whoever gets the first dagger. So as shown on the leaderboard, Etrogens in particular are overtuned, and so this is a losing matchup, just so you know, particularly if they're a heavy biped version with something like a pile bunker or a slicer or the chainsaw. Uh, unless the opponent makes a pretty severe mistake. These builds are attempting to leverage strafing uh, at a really tight angle, which makes your lunge um, very unreliable. And uh, the direction of your QB should be to try to sort of go 45 degrees forward and in the opposite direction of their dodge, so that your lunge, um, so that you're, or, or just parallel with them. Either option it works, but the point is to make it so that your follow-up lunge is right after their QB. The longer, longer the opening goes though, the more likely you're gonna lose. But whoever wins the stagger race wins the match. Um, you can also, with lightweights at least, use uh, AB plus Zimmerman and missiles pressure and just orbit with them, trying to get at least enough impact so that your light slash uh, will stagger them. Uh, they likely won't be fleeing away though, so that is one nice touch. Uh, you can also surprise pop the assault armor if you're clearly losing. They'll counter with their armor and you can just use the uh, animation time of that pulse armor to try to fly away. Um, you can also go up and in a corkscrew pattern, 
and uh, they will stagger you, but the goal here is to try to set up a situation, depending on the melee weapons, where they're out of position to take advantage of the punish, allowing you to reset and get one more tent. Uh, this particularly works if they have missiles that they can't time super well, like, for example, their own Javelin Beta. Um, they'll often have already fired it, and then if you know you can take that to get rid of your bar, you can get into a position where they can't punish you, let the missile hit you, and reset the stagger. Another tip to do, uh, or to take advantage of, is to get out of ideal range uh, of the opponent when they give you an opportunity to do so and your weapons are on cooldown, and recharge your EN. So if you run out of EN, as I mentioned, in close quarters, uh, they'll win. So I often will fake a charge or light pulse blade slash, and then QB backwards, and then keep backpedaling, and I can usually buy myself maybe not the full bar of EN back, but a lot of times I can get a good chunk of EN bar back, and... Uh, it, it creates this uh, situation where they sometimes need uh, will get greedy and a little too offensive and disregard. Again, these are all mind games, so you're trying to set up situations where they don't know if they need to chase you into your charge up ones or if they need to be ready to dodge it. Um, don't discount kicks on heavy bipeds either, as we need the javelin data to connect in those matchups. Uh, they have too much stability, especially if they're running the double exigens. Their strategy is very brain dead, and this is kind of highlighting how overtuned the estrogens are all they need to do is a b at you and just hold the triggers down and you will uh and if they just dodge like your line they don't need to even dodge that many if they can just stall not getting charge hit they're going to win the stagger race uh hopefully from soft realizes when they nerfed the vientos that they essentially just re-released it in an even stronger version now as the one weakness that the old vientos had doesn't apply anymore uh but i wouldn't count on it <laughs> From soft, they're terrible at math and balancing. They usually take two to six months to figure out something that average people spot in just like a couple of minutes. Like if you just count, calculate the impact per second on uh, a lot of the weapons that have been over tuned in the past, you can see the problem quite clearly. Uh, yeah, so moving on. Uh, oh, and then one other thing to also mention, sometimes they'll run the shield and just rely on kicks for punishes. This is even worse of a matchup for you, but uh, the one nice thing is they can't shoot their Etzogen uh, on the left side at the same time that they have the shield up. So. Uh, they have to give up some of their offense, which uh, means you don't need to trick them that many times. I would also say don't discount the double light slash in these heavy biped matchups. Yes, we normally anticipate needing the heavy, the charged one, but uh, like really strong players will be able to evade the lunges quite reliably, uh, just because we don't have the time to set up mind games really uh, with like extensive Zimmerman pressure and missile pressure, uh, forcing them to react. They can just eat those hits and be ready to just punish the stagger once the opportunity arises. Moving on to midway bipeds of 1800 stability or less. Um, so no purging is needed for these. Uh, it is very important that you be able to spot the difference between 1800 or less and 1850 though, uh, because that's the difference between the charged pulse blade and does and staggering immediately or not. Uh, this is most often your strongest matchup though, due to them just having not sufficient stats and everything, and midweights do need a severe buff in this game. They're too slow to be evasive, uh, their QBs aren't powerful enough to move them enough, um, and their boosters often have too low of QB reload. They're too low stability to handle our light version of our combo, so charge, pulse, and the Zimmerman. And the Javelin Beta is still worth keeping though, just as extra pressure, because you've got enough EN to, uh, or EN recharge with this new core change that I made that uh, there's no real loss of capability by keeping all four. Originally, we would have purged it just to get better EN, but we don't need it anymore. Uh, heavy biped, double Zimmerman, and double missile, or heavy biped, double Zimmerman with one missile, one shield. No purging, you're going to need uh, all of your tools again. These fights are won largely based on the kick, due to both sides having burst single instance damage weapons, and so there's going to be a lot of downtime when our weapons are not doing something. Uh, and the kicks also set up the double Zimmerman hit, which uh, if you've already got some impact built up, you'll be staggered. The Zimmermans are going to do 1200 impact, which will decay to 720 if unmitigated by AB. So you can see how important using the AB feature here is. If you can absorb, like if you have a hit that you are not going to be able to dodge, then it's best just to activate the AB and take it to reduce it. They'll usually land both Zimmermans into a kick though, which uh, is not enough to stagger you. So that means you can make a choice at the beginning about whether to open up with Charge Slicer into Pulse Blade. Uh, however, this comes at the penalty of your, even if you get the stagger, you only get the pulse blade punish, which isn't enough to kill them. Hopefully they pop their armor, but a smart player will not. It'll, they'll take the pulse blade and save their pulse armor for the next initiation, uh, because the, if you get them with a the slicer, they essentially have to pop the armor, and otherwise they'll be left with too little health to reliably survive into the next initiation. 
Uh, for us, uh, using AB and Zimmermaning and landing the Javelin Vader are essential skills to master here. Um, I think that the Charged Pulse Blade is uh, setting it up is going to be your best strategy, but again, don't discount the Light Slashes, particularly if they are really good with the, P, uh, with the PS Shield and parrying. Until they nerf the amount of deploys there, we simply can't overwhelm it. It's just got too many deploys, so you're never going to be able to overheat that shield you uh or overwhelm it uh before you're staggered you need to uh try to play mind games and slip it through varying up the timing of the light slash if they're aggressive is another option as well uh, i also try to set up a bit of a height disparity uh this helps with the weapon tracking of their zimmermans as well as their kicks not being as reliable and also sets up uncomfortable and hard to predict angles with the qb uh when we want to like qb pass them set up an angle for a charge pulse blade Another thing to note for heavy bipeds is that your assault armor will not re-stagger the heaviest bipeds outright, and so you need to be ready to follow up with this enemy. Uh, yeah, and uh, they will play patient if they're running the shield and try to block as much of your offense as possible while just trading into the Zimmermans, because you can't really afford, at most you can afford three salvos, assuming you've AB'd uh, reduced effectively, but more often than not it's going to be more like two. Um, Keep in mind your Javelin Beta can skirt their shield if you circle clockwise, that's the most reliable way to go. Sometimes it'll work if you stay in close and go counterclockwise, but the clockwise orientation is usually the best, assuming your missiles are your right shoulder. Uh, you can also add in the Charge Slicer follow-up if you just fell a little bit short of st staggering them. A lot of times these builds tend to be really aggressive with like trying to stay close to you, and that walks them right into having their kick get parried by the Charge Slicer. But you will find that the Zimmerman just does a lot of impact, at, even through the Slicer. Now, I'm not sure if this is because it's clipping through uh, or something, but um, it just doesn't. It just does a lot of impact, and so even with the reduction, that can be a major threat. You can often get staggered through the charged animation if you're are, like if you've already taken uh, if you've already taken a hit or two. Uh, Ideally, what we would really like to see is, uh, particularly the Pulse Blade, because this makes a lot of sense, uh, but honestly, any lunging melee weapon should have a much higher PA interference stat. Right now, they average around 146, but they need to be 250 to 300 in order for the math to make sense, and keep uh, keep melee weapons as a threatening, but not uh, but not like overpowered tool against shields. The only shield that should be able to completely shut down melee weapons ought to be the PB Buckler, but uh, as of now, even with a 1,200 impact charge pulse blade, you only ended up doing about 300 impact against a parried uh, PS shield, which is incredibly easy to parry with at 0 0.6 seconds. So if a shield's that easy to use with that many deploys and that fast cooling, it needs to still take a significant amount of impact buildup, um, even when parried. So uh, I think around 600 impact buildup would be the uh, speed spot. That way, they can only afford to take that twice before they're in danger of getting staggered anyways. Uh, heavy biped vertical kites are up next. Uh, oh, sorry, and one more thing about heavy bipeds that I forgot to mention with a shield. You need to be immediate with the assault armor upon PA, like literally about the same as when you're against aerial targets. And the reason being is they can deploy the shield uh, upon getting staggered. Or sorry, upon them popping the pulse armor. Uh, sorry, the counter assault armor. They can parry your assault armor. So uh, if they're running pulse armor, they can't do anything about it. But if they're running assault armor, which some of them will, uh, as soon as they wake up from their assault armor, they'll just deploy the shield, which will parry your counter assault armor. So heavy biped vertical kites, uh, no purging again, we're gonna need all of our tools here. The strategy is gonna be to coax them into air, into the air and spending EN while we poke them with missiles and ranged Zimmermans. Uh, if they're getting offensive, then kicks are very useful for cutting their outgoing damage, like if they're A-being at you, uh, as well as holding them level for light slash follow-up. So kicks are really useful against these guys because they're gonna try to free fall drop past you a lot of the time and getting good at keeping just underneath them while you're pressuring them during AB, despite it wanting to angle you up and level with them. Uh, you want to cut your booster and free fall with them a lot of the time, just hitting with the Zimmerman and the uh, missile. If they're running lasers, obviously, then it's more important to get the kicks rather than the missiles and the Zimmermans, though, because you need to interrupt them. And also uncharge them. Uh, another strategy, if they aren't dropping, is simply to Zimmerman and missile repeatedly uh, while you orbit them at AB range, or at range while ABing. Um, your prime moments of weakness are when they need to go to the ground to get their EN back, and that's your opportunity to charge Pulse Blade. But if they're really bad, then, I mean, I don't want to say bad, but if they're just not aware of how to counter melee, um, the charge Pulse Blade, if they're letting you get level, then that's great. Then you can just outright delete these builds by uh, 
just charge pulse plating into them with the uh, Zimmerman follow up, or even Zimmerman at close range into the uh, charged pulse plate, uh, and then uh, Raiden with the slicer punish counter assault armor immediately again because they're gonna drop, and uh, yeah, you can uh, take them out right in one combo. Tanks, very difficult matchups again because the back because tanks again are still too fast and our AV is so weak. Uh, the problem with light melee lunging to close the gap here is that we need, the tanks have a very strong preference uh, versing us for wanting us to have uh, a lot of EN left by the time we close the gap. And that's one of the big reasons I think AV needs to be improved in terms of thrust on the Kikaku, but we are going to need enough energy to flee once we've finished our combo, uh, whether they pop armor or not, because otherwise they often have a combo that can just delete you in one shot. So using the light melee lunge is a little too expensive. I'd recommend trying to do the AV lunge more uh, while you close the gap, or try to body them to the outside of the map if the map allows cover for you to leapfrog to and keep them uh, from having the back pedal option, because they do not suffer a movement penalty when driving backwards on the tank legs. Um, your opening for these guys, often, uh, like, if they don't have the highest ability stats, you can get away with just a charged pulse blade into and javelin beta um, and then Zimmerman. But I think it's just good habit to weave in the kick at the beginning just to hold them for the javelin beta and the pulse blade. Uh, you're going to have to accurately predict their QB direction, though, when they wake up from the kick so that your pulse blade lands. Because a lot of times they'll try to go through you. Uh, so what I usually recommend for tanks is to QB to the uh, opposite side that they tend to QB through you. So if they go like through you and to the left, you want to QB to the uh, like backwards, or sorry, either to the to the left and uh, then QB or pulse blade directly backwards, or you can move backwards with them and then the opposite direction. So like QB to the back right if they go through you to the left. That gives you enough space for the pulse blade to reorientate and, and prevent them from just like making the lunge from whiffing. Uh, but Honestly, there's lots of different angles you can take advantage of and you really have to read them. They'll also, if they're really good, use kicks to interrupt your charge pulse blade if you try just to open up with that. Uh, and so height disparity is another feature that we can try to take advantage of. Uh, but honestly, just winning the kick fight is a huge part of this. When they pop their pulse armor, your assault armor is not going to even come close to staggering them and the follow-up Zimmerman won't work either. Uh, Depending on their loadout, that might be acceptable. Like if they're not running double lasers, then you can just often work in like another kick. Just keep pressuring with the Zimmerman and multiple hits until you can get your follow-up uh, slicer again. Um, keep in mind that you'll be on your, like you'll have finished your slicer and then likely would have swapped to the pulse armor, but we ideally want to get another slicer punish. So you almost don't want to stagger them until the slicer is back off cooldown anyways. Another option is to just simply expect their pulse armor. Uh, once they pop it, just flee and save your assault armor to make it easier to stagger them the next time, because then you should be able to finish them off uh, once you've hit them a couple of times, like say with a, Zim a Javelin Beta and a Zimmerman or something. Uh, the assault armor will finish the stagger. You can go into your full slicer. Uh, and I think that is the more optimal strategy, even though I haven't employed it in a lot of my videos yet. I just did some math and rationalizing. And I think that it's just better to save your assault armor as another re-stagger. Uh, if you're super low on health after the first initiation, obviously it feels kind of bad because it's going to be, uh, they're basically just going to get you once, but uh, say la vie, that is the nature of tanks at the moment. All right, uh, heavy tetras uh, are much the same as tanks, but slightly easier due to your one combo deleting them successfully. They don't have as much AP, they just have a lot of stability. And so uh, just be mindful of the follow-up Zimmerman needed after an assault armor counter again. Um, Tetras have high stability, low AP, um, so the slicer punish into follow-up pulse plate is an immediate delete, forcing them to pop their pulse armor to interrupt your first combo. Uh, if they're the floating type, so like if their build relies on them going up in the air, stalling at the start of the match behind cover and having them burn a lot of their EN is the ideal strategy. Now you don't want them to burn everything because you want to have time to close the gap, uh, but you'll need to be close enough yet behind cover to ensure that they don't feel safe dropping to get their EN back. Your optimal lunge approach is to gap close as they're in their last one third of the end or so and stay around 30 degrees below them. A lot of times they'll be running the uh, hammer and sorry, I mean 30 degrees from pointing straight down. So uh, uh, 60 degrees if they're, um, if they're if you're measuring from level. Then pepper them with the Zimmerman and the Javelin Beta and until they begin to free fall, at which point you can commit to the charged lunge uh, and Zimmer Zimmerman follow up and the Javelin Beta if it's off cooldown, but you should have already built up enough uh, stability uh, or sorry, impact buildup that the pulse blades are meant to stay your slicer. If not, just ensure your javelin beta is reloaded for the moment that this uh, that this EM uh, drain occurs. 
No Pulse Armor, you'll need to counter Assault Armor and Zimmerman very quickly again because they have the drop effect with the Pulse Armor currently. And then Pulse Blade for the finish. If they're still alive, which is not going to be the case for most builds, then you can poke with the Javelin Beta at range and just finish them off while dodging all of their attacks in your AB. Lamb Kites are a, uh, a big thorn, however, so you're going to need to purge the Slicer. They don't have any uh, like uh, armor points, really. And just save your Assault Armor for a punish, because you cannot usually afford to chase down lambs twice. Uh, it's going to cost you too much health. Um, just because they have terrible resistance, resistances, though, you can often just make the Assault Armor your big punish. It's a losing matchup for certain, as lambs are still just too fast and burn EN too slowly, and our melee thrust is too slow to compensate. Um, it definitely needs a buff in terms of the ceiling for melee thrust, but uh, again, say la vie. Uh, note that they're not going to need to drop to the ground completely if they're running the coral generator, so we need to time our approach to be ready to pounce as they begin to drop again. Um, stay below them, though, because you don't want to give them opportunities to land those hammers and uh, make it a priority to dodge the coral missile, which will often run. You need to have enough room in your stability to uh, to punch through with the uh, or punch through the first swing of the hammer, which is about 800 and change impact. So if you don't have that, you can't afford to uh, to attempt a punish. You need to uh, back off, regenerate, and try again. And that often sucks because they'll have done a lot of damage to you at that point. But it only takes one really good combo to end this build. Um, charged pulse blade is if they have. QB energy room, like if they have energy, it's not going to work, so don't even try. Um, you're only going to go for the charge pulse blade when they have the, uh, when they have run out of the end and are beginning to drop. Don't fire the javelin beta wastefully is another tip. You don't need to build up impact on these builds, really. You just need to secure one opportunity to get the stagger. Um, maybe two opportunities you'll get if you're lucky and you manage to dodge some hits, but uh, the, it's going to take you usually around 40 seconds before you can even start your approach um, because they'll often be running the big uh, capacity coral generator. Chip damage is not necessary is what I'm saying here. It literally just is that one moment of weakness that you need to capitalize on. Okay, so that's basically everything for my video. Um, I hope you guys take a lot of this and enjoy it. Obviously, Bailey still needs some rebalancing things and there are some clear weaknesses once you get into the, you know, like top 1,000 players in S rank. Um, so I'm currently like hovering around the top 500. I, uh, I can still beat a lot of the builds, but there are definitely some players that I know uh, know how to counter melee very well and can take advantage of the, of the uh, too low melee thrust variable. But uh, that doesn't mean that you can't make this build work uh, for the vast majority of matchups. And it's a really fun play style to play, and it's one that I uh, have loved since the game came out. I've been running variations of melee builds since one week after the game launched. And this is a lot of what I think um, I think is essential. Some tips that I, or rather maybe just one tip that I didn't mention in the video, which I presume everybody knows now, but something to note is that biped legs on level ground have an advantage for melee, which is that their QB doesn't make them float. Whereas a lot of other melee builds run reverse joints because of their kick priority. Um, but I think that uh, that's oversold just because people don't realize you can melee lunge through that kick and, or melee QB dodge through that kick. Um, and so uh, I prefer bipeds just because of the ability to QB spam effectively on the ground, uh, which helps a lot with close close quarters matches against things like Vientos and Hetzogens. So usually running bipeds are the best way to go for uh, melee builds. Knock legs are a bit of a hindrance a lot of the time though because your QB canceling your animations puts you too far away from your opponents. So that's the reason that I'm running the legs that I do and uh, it's something to consider as well. So enjoy the melee playstyle, and uh, yeah, I hope to see more melee players uh, grow in the community and that the game bounces back. Hopefully that's the next patch.